I have lived in Fall River a good many years. All that time, the Bordens have occupied the house next door. I exchanged calls with Miss Lizzie Borden regularly. She always received me upstairs. The name's Bridget Sullivan. I was sometimes called Maggie by Miss Emma and Miss Lizzie. It being the name of the previous girl. I came to Fall River four years ago, have worked for the Bordens ever since. My full name is Emma L. Borden. The L is for Lenora. I am the sister of Miss Lizzie Borden. I was just a trifle over 14 when my father married for the second time, and I remember my mother very well. My name is Lizzie Andrew Borden. Not Elizabeth, Lizzie. Andrew, after my father, I was so christened. I am innocent. I leave it to my counsel to speak for me. In the house of Borden, there's a lock on every door. In every room, a prisoner of a long, silent war. Let us take you to an August back in 1892, when all hell broke loose in the house of Borden. Andrew Jackson Borden knows that pennies must be pinched. So Monday's mutton supper will be Tuesday's mutton lunch. And then to stretch it further, Thursday's breakfast is mutton soup. And we're getting sick in the house of Borden. When daddy was an undertaker, nobody was too tall. you charge him for the big box and bury him in the small. To save a couple dollars, he'd chop off a couple feet. He's fucking rich, that Mr. Borden. In the house of Borden, there's a lock on every door. In every room, a prisoner of a long silent war. Let us take you to an August back in 1892, when all hell rose in the house of Borden. The sisters live in the front of the house, the old folks take the rear. It seems a bit peculiar, but they've kept it up for years. I won't say they're not cordial. Crowded's more the word. They get no peace in the house of Borden. Lizzie's not the brightest bird, and Emma's not so sweet. Mind you, these are not my words, but I hear things on the street. Any way you slice it, these girls are past their prime. There's no wet bells in the house of Borden. In the house of Borden, there's a lock on every door. In every room, a prisoner of a long silent war. Let us take you. Mrs. Borden, after our mother died, if she's in it for the money, she's in for a big surprise. We have no personal objection, but she can't have what's ours! <clears throat> fair is fair in the house of Borden. The family crest of Borden is a lion with an axe, running rampant into battle, ready to attack. It's an awfully fitting emblem for a family like this And we're killing time in the house of Borden In the house of Borden There's a lock on every door In every room a prisoner of a long silent war Let us take you to an August back in 1892 When all hell broke in the house of Borden When I was a girl I gave my father my gold ring he wears it to this day, a symbol of my love for him. My middle name is Andrew. Father wanted a boy. But I'm daddy's little girl now. The father loved the younger one. Some say a bit too much. They say she talks to pigeons. But who am I to judge? I don't mean to spread a rumor, these are just things that I hear. 
But there's some crazy shite in the house of Borden.
Still touch me.
Lissy, I've been looking all over for you. Are you alone? Yes. Then come up. Come up and see them. Father says birds are filthy, but I think they're beautiful. Why can't it be different? Emma and I used to think that it ought to be. We used to hope it might be different. Maybe someday it will be. Maybe someday your heart will be open. Maybe someday you will know. Maybe someday I will make you see. Your secret safe now. My secret safe now. Your secret safe now. With me. What our father does for your people, he ought to be doing for his own daughters. You are not our mother, and you never will be. Miss Emma, what do you want for breakfast? I don't want any breakfast. Maggie, have you seen Lizzie this morning? No, but she must have gotten up early. Her bed is freshly made, as if she hadn't slept in it at all. to go. Lizzie, shall I call on you tonight? Yes. Emma, what are these goings on? Why has Maggie packed her bag? I am going to Fairhaven. What has happened? This is what has happened. That woman has convinced father to change his will. She is trying to close us out. How could she do that? Look here. If father dies before her, she'll take everything, and we'll have nothing. And then what shall we do? Emma, please. Lizzie, I must get away for a few days. I shall figure something out. Please don't leave me here alone with them. I am afraid somebody would do something if I were to see her again. Emma, wait! What if Mrs. Borden dies first?
Oh, and she asked me to pack it special? I shall take care of it for her. The Book of Household Poisons. Time for Mrs. Borden's tea. Fire burn and toil, kettle bubble, water boil, a psalm, Ceylon, bitter trouble, very strong. Prussic acid is one of the most rapidly acting toxins that affects mammals. Black leaves and steep, settle cozy, dark asleep, oh soo, this day, milk and sugar, cup of tea. Several common plants can accumulate large quantities. Shatter fire cane, burn velvet and grass, toil, sorghum and white bubble, water millipedes and, and burnets, flax when it is rubble, very strong, black leaves and, and steep, pale and milky sides, blazing precious Would you need that? To clean a stain. A stain? What stain? On that old sealskin cape. Miss Lizzie, what would you be needing that cape for in this heat? Lizzie! Alice! Will you receive a friend here in the yard, or shall we go upstairs? Oh, Alice, I, I am so sorry. I must go to Benz's pharmacy. Why? Mr. and Mrs. Borden were awfully sick last night. Are your father and mother all right? Don't call her mother! Are you well? We were all sick, all but Maggie. The milk. I think our milk might be poisoned. We all drank of it all but Maggie, and Maggie wasn't sick. If it had been the milk from the farmer himself, I should suppose other people would be sick, and I haven't heard of anybody. 
How do you get your milk? We have our milk come in a can and set on the step and we have an empty can. We put out the empty can overnight and then next morning when they bring the milk, they take the empty can. And what time does the farmer come? I think about four o'clock. Well, it is light at four. I shouldn't think anybody would dare to come then and tamper with the cans for fear that someone should see them. I shouldn't think so. But Mrs. Borden even told the doctor that she thought she had been poisoned. Who would do something like that? I don't know. But I can't sleep at night. I'm afraid that somebody will do something. I don't know, but what somebody will do something. I want to sleep with my eyes half open. One eye open half the time. But if you close your eyes, you'll see the golden pear it hides the can open up your heart and end your toil. See how they ripen on the bough, now they're falling to the ground to be gathered up in skirts before they spoil. Tongue and it's been rising the 
stand still Thick with rain that hasn't yielded Thunder rumbles low But still no storm Foul winds blow Leave a strange metallic aftertaste And carry whispers Too soft to hear Splatters over the reeking floor. <laughs> Miss Lizzie, what do you want for breakfast? I don't know as I want any breakfast. But I guess I'll have some coffee and cookies. Maggie, are you going out to wash the windows? Yes. I done them inside already, but Mrs. Borden wants them done inside and out. Your father's gone to town. Your stepmother's cleaning the guest room upstairs. All by herself. And I'll be out around here so you needn't lock the door. Or you can lock it if you want to. Oh, I can get the water in the barn. Somebody will do something. Somebody will take something. Somebody will strike something. Somebody will die! <laughs> takes a walk, Mrs. Borden goes upstairs, and I can hardly talk, I'm so afraid, I went down to the cellar, and searched behind some sacks, my eyes they never saw it, but my hands they found the axe, I'm so
You startled me. Mr. Borden's just come home. He's set to keep the noise down. He'll be napping in the living room and doesn't want to be disturbed. Maggie, you are going out this afternoon. I don't know. I might and I might not. I don't feel very well. If you go out, be sure to lock the door. For Mrs. Borden has gone out on a sick call. And I might go out too. Miss Lizzie. Who is sick? I don't know. Somebody. Somebody? Yes. She had a note from somebody this morning. It must be in town. There's a cheap sale of dresses at Sargent's this afternoon. Pennies on the yard. I'm going to have a lovely one. With Maggie so retired, stepmother quite unbent. Father will be napping. He'll wish he had that son! Russell, I don't want to be alone in this house. What's the matter? Father is dead. Somebody came in and killed him. left us quite a mess splattered blood and brains on everything except on lizzie's dress it's a crime scene it's a nightmare it's a bloodbath it's a fright it's a butcher shop in the house of borden a mob is gathering outside half the town is in the yard the press is in a frenzy cops are standing guard it must have been a lunatic, a foreigner, a beast. But it's just us girls in the house of Borden. I was in the backyard. Did you see anyone or hear anything? I saw no one, heard no screams. Where were you in the yard? I was up in the barn loft. Why would you go back up there after? What happened? I went out to get a lead sinker for my fishing trip. I heard a distressing noise, like scraping, and came back and found the screen door open. How long were you up there? Twenty minutes. Must have been sweltering. I ate some pears. Lizzie was in the backyard. Or did she say the barn? It's only been a day now, and she's spinning quite a yarn. What we know for sure is there were four, and now there's two. There's no coming back to the house of Borden. In the house of Borden, somebody left us quite a mess. Splattered blood and brains on everything except on Lizzie's dress. It's a crime scene, it's a nightmare, it's a bloodbath, it's a fright. And it blew the roof off the house of Borden.
Well, you do the math. To what have you done? Well, I wasn't gonna wait for an engraved invitation. Now I got twice the trouble, got two for one. Quit your bitching, can't you see a win win situation? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck now, Lizzie? Well, he ain't crawling back in the bed now, is he? No! Losing my love, this is the best that you could do. Damn, if I leave you alone for a minute, what possessed you to murder the old man? The deal had a plan and an axe was in it What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck now is he? Well, he ain't coming round in the dark now is he? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck now is he? And she ain't gonna get all the dough now is she? No! last night? I'm so sorry about your father and... Mrs. Borden? What do you want for breakfast? I don't want any breakfast. Where is Lizzie? I haven't seen her this morning. She must still be sleeping, poor thing. I did find her dress all in a heap. Gonna be hell to get out all this... Maggie, give that to me. The name's Bridget. Bridget, <laughs> give that to me. Well, Miss Lizzie did say there was a cheap sale of dresses at Sargent's this afternoon. Pennies on the yard. Lizzie! Emma, you haven't destroyed the dress yet? No. Why didn't you? You had better. I would if I were you. Lizzie. Emma? Alice? What are you doing? I'm just going to burn this whole thing up. It's covered with paint. The policemen have returned. They'd like to speak to Miss Russell.
What have you done? I'm afraid the worst thing you could have done was to burn that dress. The police have been asking questions. Why didn't you come tell me? Why did you let me do it? Questions all about your dresses. Alice, what did you tell them? Questions and more questions. Answering questions, questions, more and more questions, questions every day, questions, questions, filling my mind with questions. Answering questions, questions, more and more questions, questions every day, questions, questions, filling my mind with questions. What do you know? Who told you that? What's that you say? Who would do this to them? What did you see? Were you alone? See anybody else? Were there strangers around? Answering questions, questions, more and more questions, questions every day, questions, questions, filling my mind with questions. What do you know? Did you know that they've been murdered? Who told you that? Did you see him with your What's own that eyes? you say? Did he have any? Who would do this to them? What did you see? Where were you when it were happened? Were you alone? Did your mother have a See visitor? anybody else? Near the house on Was the there strangers around?
What are you going to tell them? The truth. The truth? I want to know the truth! I saw you. I saw Miss Lizzie Borden burn that dress. Miss Lizzie, one of the police gentlemen wants to speak with you. Why? I tried to keep it from you as long as possible. I begged them to let you stay here with me. Lizzie, they have come to take you to the jailhouse in Taunton until a trial date can be set. Miss Emma, the police have pulled the carriage around the front of the house. Should I have them move it to the back? No. I am ready to go. Fall River, my sister and I thank you for your kind regards in our time of sorrow. We have this day offered a $5,000 reward to be paid to anyone who may secure the arrest and conviction of the person or persons who occasioned the death of our father and his wife. Until that time, we pray that the Lord will sustain us. Out of the depths I cry to Thee, Lord, Lord, hear my voice. Let Thy ears be attentive to the voice of my prayer. is Lizzie Andrew Borden, not Elizabeth, Lizzie. Andrew, after my father, I was so christened. I am innocent. I leave it to my counsel to speak for me. My full name is Emma L. Borden. 
I am the sister of Miss Lizzie Borden. Maybe someday we'll all forget. The name's Bridget Sullivan. I was sometimes called Maggie by Miss Emma and Miss Lizzie. Maybe someday they won't whisper, point and stare. I am Alice Russell. But my secret's safe now. I exchanged calls with Miss Lizzie Borden regularly. She always received me upstairs. My secret's safe now. Lizzie spoke of trouble with her stepmother, that Mrs. Borden thought so-and-so. But the whole thing was, as far as I could see, that one's own mother might have had more influence over the father. It was the father more than the mother. They were young girls, but young girls cannot go and do and have. They tried to keep me down. But I said no. collection of anything of that kind. No, sir. I don't seem to remember it. I don't remember what you asked me. I don't remember the question nor the answer. I can only say I don't remember giving it. I don't know whether I did or not. I can't tell you. I was in Fairhaven. I got my dream team working on my defense. It cost me a bloody fortune, but I spare no expense. on the evening of Wednesday, August 3rd, I was waiting for Miss Lizzie Borden. But when she came, she said... She was on her way to Benz's pharmacy for prussic acid to clean a stain. And she said, Mr. and Mrs. Borden were awfully sick last night. We were all sick, all but Maggie. I had a sick headache and I was sick to my stomach. And she said, Mrs. Borden even told the doctor that she thought she had been poisoned. I asked her who would do something like that and she didn't know. She said, I can't sleep at night. I'm afraid that somebody will do something. Now that you mention me, I can't stand the night. I sit here in the darkness, waiting for the light. Eleven days and taunting, waiting for the break of day. Ten more days in this hole, then I fly away. They love the windows, I didn't see her anymore until I found her dead upstairs. I don't remember to have heard a sound of anyone about the house until Mr. Borden came to the door. As I unlocked it, I said, ugh, pshaw, 
and Miss Lizzie laughed at the top of the stairs. You say that I'm not weeping, that I'm not dressed in black. Call me a Yankee flag of this crowd. Well, then I do not. I've done my share of crying. Lord, my dues is paid. I got three more days in time. Sister turned and said, what are you going to do? I swear that I didn't say it. The reason that I say I didn't say so is because I didn't say so. And Lizzie said, I'm going to burn this old thing up. There was nothing of that kind said. It is covered with paint. It was soiled, just as any dress would get soiled. And I said, why don't you, or something like that. I can't tell the exact words. I am quite sure I left the room and I told the officer that I saw Miss Lizzie Borden burn that dress. Turn on the century Turn on the screw Now, our 